Welcome to the Whiskey Roundtable. We are your hosts. Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. Welcome back after our hiatus. Our it. Easter break. Our Easter. Easter break. Yeah, we're not done with the hiatus yet. <laughs> we well, got two more weeks. Yeah. Man. Oh, yeah, it's a yeah, whole yeah. different story. That, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a whole different story. Right? How much longer is this going to last? May 1st, Ohio opens up. That's, that's what the governor said today. So. I mean, the virus, you wouldn't think, could last that long. After all, it's made in China. So. Right. <laughs> Good point. But don't vote. Somebody is on fire today. He is on fire. You're on today. fire today. What, what's what's going on at home, man? <laughs> Pretty much the same old, same old. <laughs> yeah. All right. Tired of staring at the walls. All right. This is a nice break. We're keeping. Uh, we're not. Um, maybe we're not doing the six foot. We're we're doing the W H O. Recommended distancing. What is the WHO? One meter, three feet. Oh, so, okay, all right. So. There you go. Right. Well, I live with him, so oh, I can be as close as possible. Yeah, yeah. But see, well, we're those good. glasses anyway. Yeah. That's okay. Those uh, things have a mind of their own. They do they? have a mind of their own. We got to get you new glasses. Yeah, I meant to bring mine from the office, and I forgot. So it is what it is. But you're still out, and you're still working. Right? I'm still you're working. Still yeah. So I, work. I'm a, everything I do is essential. So I don't. <laughs> I'm not working from home. I'm everywhere. I'm out in the public doing everything. So it is what it is. I don't care. Whatever. It, it really hasn't changed anything for me, so to say. The only thing it's changed uh, is, you know, I, I'm seeing less friends, you know, because they're, they're, you know, elderly families and different things like that. So it is what it is, which is fine. It is. It's, I'm glad they're taking the time out and not thinking about themselves. They're not self-centered like I am. So... <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah. it's interesting that this is the year of the rat, and the year starts off with a pandemic. I think we Play. got rid of a couple of rats. Yeah. So, so I guess it's appropriate for the year of the rat. Yeah, I agree. With you. I mean, That's it. Game on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what are you smoking, Dougie? What are you smoking? Oh, oh you're not. That's right. I'm sorry. That's, I'm just Karen, you and I me. apologize. Yeah. I've got my Tatiana I'm chocolate. I'm talking to Dougie, getting I'm all mixed up today. That's okay. Mm-hmm. My Tatiana chocolate cigar from Royal Havana. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's some of the uh, product caters to ladies' taste. Yep, yeah, they do. I, I got uh, I'm smoking a CAO Brasilia, a full Maduro, and uh, Brazilian wrapper for the Maduro Ecuadorian blend binders. Good cigar, full body. I love it. What about you, Sidecar? Sidecar, what are you smoking? I'm smoking a... World uh, Havana house with cigar. With a devil on the bottom. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that's called. But no, I don't know, but that's right up your alley. Yeah, that's good. The <laughs> devil made me do it. The devil made Thanks, me do Dave. it. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, Dave. Yeah. Thanks. What about you over there? I don't know if what you want you your name what mentioned. You, what are you smoking, smoking over there, Silent? What do you got going there, sweetheart? Perdomo Estate Selection. Nice. Oh, Perdomo okay. Estate. Perdomo Very nice. Estate, yeah. Very, very nice. And the estate cigar, forget the history of it. I just did the history on that a couple weeks back. Uh, what the estate is. There's a whole there's a whole family story behind that, how it got its name, that cigar. You met Nick Perdomo too. I did meet Nick Perdomo a couple times. Yep. Yeah, yep, everybody's kinda, getting kind of cabin <clears throat> fever. Everybody's got a comment about everything now yeah, too. Everybody's know, got an opinion. Doing a Zoom call with people at work and right. after the call guys are like, You were touching your face too much. Like, I'm at home. I mean, dude. I'm isolated. I'm at home. What the <laughs> <Yeah>. hell? <laughs> Look, it wasn't scratching my ass. I, right? I, 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 I was touching worse than it was off camera. <laughs> That's okay. He knows where those hands have been. Yeah. It's you all realize right. those balls weren't yours? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my. Dog laid there for hours. <laughs> he was content. It's mm-hmm. all good. I That's just wrote right. that kid's in here all night. Thank God. <laughs> I'm a lucky gal. I know. I'm a lucky gal. All right, so do we want to uh, take a few minutes and share some information about Royal Havana? Yeah, since we're smoking. Uh, we're we're going to do a quick uh, word good. from one of our sponsors, and we'll see you in a few All minutes. All right, we'll be right back. Hi, it's the gang from the Whiskey Roundtable here. We're not here to talk about whiskey. 
We're here to talk about cigars, Royal Havana Cigars. Royal Havana Cigars is located at 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio. That's 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio. Royal Havana Cigar Lounge is tailored to an old 50s, 60s Cuban theme with a friendly atmosphere. Their walk-in humidor is filled with top cigar brands. Trust us, you're bound to find the cigar you're looking for. Royal Havana's friendly atmosphere and comfortable accommodations gives you the opportunity to relax in one of their fine chairs and enjoy a fine cigar. Try one of their house brand cigars. Royal Havana house brand cigars are rolled fresh every week. Not to mention the price is right. What else does Royal Havana offer, you ask? Let us tell you. Check out Royal Havana's large inventory of lighters, cutters, butane, lockers for rent, ashtrays, rocks glasses, and coffee cups. And hey ladies, Royal Havana has gift cards and a clothing boutique. And while you're there, check out the humidor for the fine line of cigars tailored to a woman's taste. That's right, we said it. They have cigars that are specially designed for a woman's enjoyment. Visit Royal Havana Cigars at gmail.com for all of Royal Havana's up-and-coming cigar events. They also host public and private events like weddings, family get-togethers, golf outings, wine tastings, just to name a few. So next time you're in the area, stop in at Royal Havana Cigars and see owner Dave Somrock and mention the name Big G from the Whiskey Roundtable, and you'll receive 10% off your first cigar purchase. Listen, we know what some of you are thinking. You can get a cigar anywhere. But hey, at Royal Havana, you can only get a good cigar. That's Royal Havana Cigars, located at 38448 Lakeshore Boulevard in Willoughby, Ohio, and tell them Big G from the Whiskey Roundtable sent you. All right, nice job on the uh, commercial, yeah. you guys. Yeah, thank you. thank you. Good job. Nice job. Thank getting you. some sponsors, getting some activity. Yeah, yeah. we are. We have a couple of commercials that we're starting to do right now, so it's, it's all good, man. It's all coming together. And so. now you guys can see Dave, a face to go with the name. Yep. Good guy. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll be with him all day tomorrow, so that'll be fun. Oh, his lucky day. This is his lucky day. Um, I'm so, looking forward to meeting him. So Matt Souza is asking how much for a case of the house cigars at, at Royal Havana, Greg. Do you I, have I, a price on that? I, I, it depends on what you want. So I would say anywhere from, uh, you know, $80 to as much as 150 So mm -hmm. it all depends on what kind of cigar he wants, the size, all that stuff. So the house brand cigars that so you just smoke, figure, what are you thinking? Are they on the higher end of that, or? Yeah, a, a cigar that I smoke is uh, somewhere between seven and eight bucks a cigar. Okay. Now, that, obviously, you get a little cheaper if you buy a bundle. You know, it probably saves you ten or twelve dollars. But, um, you know, it's they're they're good cigars. They're made fresh. We get them every week, fresh cigars, and we sell sell out all the time. You know, we're, within a week, you go there, and you know, before the order comes in, and there's empty spots. You know, they'll, they'll put, you know, 50, 70 cigars, 50 to 70 cigars in a, in a pocket, if you will. So that's a lot of cigars. So, but, you know, he wanted something good, and he picked a blend and did the whole nine yards, and then he did the 660 for me, which was nice. Appreciate it. And that's usually what I smoke. So today so, I'm just going, I'm a CAO fan, as everybody knows, and uh, my favorite cigar, La Trevidiata, is no longer... CEO says when the supply is done, it's done. They're not making it anymore. So I had to go out and buy a few boxes of those just to make Claire. it. Claire. Oh. Claire posed a okay. question. And, and um, Doug, you had Doug thinking there for a while because he didn't, he didn't have a quick answer. He, he, fell, like, he fell asleep while he was thinking. Mm. <laughs> so Claire says you're going to be on a desert island for mon one month. Which 18-year-old do you bring? Well, not a girl. A, not a girl. Don't We're talking whiskey. Oh, whiskey. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. okay. What 18-year-old do you bring? She gives you two choices. You've got a Spring Bank. Oh, I can't even speak. Spring Bank, 18-year-old, or a Highland Park, 18-year-old. Well, well, that's a tough one. I um, because I, I would you know one of my favorites is Highland Park, 18. It's up there in my top 10, and but I've been really getting into the Camel. Campbell Towns and particularly Springbank. Um, I don't know. I don't recall 
the last time I had the 18. So my I'm a little sketchy on that, but that is one I would love to to get a bottle of. So um, I might have to do a little research before I can answer that one. Do you? Uh, so if you brought two nine-year-olds, would anybody <laughs> look at you funny, or would they go with the nine-year-old? Yeah, that's way too young. I'm right, just checking. Okay, is Harvey Weinstein on this island? <laughs> I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about Scott. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I digress. <laughs> But good, good, good question. Hello. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, if I had to choose right now because I haven't had it, I would go with the Springbank 18, just because that's something I look forward to uh, diving into. I don't know when I, I when I've had it, if I've had it. So, but it's on my list. So nice. Yeah. Very, very nice. nice. Awesome. Very very nice. And we got uh, Chris Snyder. All right. In the house. Where Actually, he? he says he's not in the house. He's in his car. Mm -hmm. um, oh. And he's not drinking whiskey, which, <laughs> thank you, Chris, for not drinking and driving. We appreciate that. Um, that's a good thing because we've all seen that you drive. You and, yeah, we, <laughs> we, we don't want, we've seen him drive, yeah. right? Yeah, you we've know. seen you drive, Chris. Ooh. You should go forward one time, see how you like yeah, it. Yes, so, my brother. <laughs> how's that weather up there in Erie? Mm. It, we got a, probably two inches at my house. Well, we woke up to four the other day, and, and it was gone by noon. The snow was, was, was over, melted, and then we got this. I didn't even know we were supposed to get snow today. Yeah, well, right. it's Cleveland, and it's uh, April, yeah. so you never know what's going to happen. Um, so, Matt Sosa, one more thing. Um, he wants to give a shout-out to Frank Rando's birthday. Oh, yes, ah. yes. So, happy birthday, Frank. Happy birthday, Frank. Enjoy my drink to you. Well, salut. Well, to Frankie Rando. There you go. And many more, please. Ugh. Good deal. I think um, I met. I think I met Frank Rand, uh, Frankie Rando, R Rando, Rando, Rando. Rando. Yeah. I think we met him. Matt, if you're listening, obviously you're listening. Let me know. Didn't we meet him at the IX Center when we were doing the uh, show out there? I think that whole crew came over and hung out with uh, Matt and Greg. What, what and was at the IX Center? We uh, the home the uh, uh, home and flower show. Oh, they had the pallet thing going. We had, we had, yeah, we're doing the pallet stuff. So, all oh, right. So I yeah. think I met him there. Which that bar was cool. The bar was cool. That bar was cool. So, but they it was last year or two years ago. Two years ago already. They had their they did a bar out of pallet wood, and, and it was a, actually featured in an outhouse, a garden outhouse. It was, yeah, that's cool. I still have the outhouse. We use that as part of our Halloween decorations. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. A scary clown in there, yes, taking that's, ones. That's cool. that's we got, actually got our stuff got featured uh, in the center of the of the IX Center. Where they do all the uh, all the stuff that was voted on, and our stuff sat in our big stuff sat the bar and the outhouse, and that sat in with everything else. And we were you know featured on the, on TV and everything else. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Right. Uh, Matt says that you also met him at the wagon wheel many times. Gotcha. Okay. okay. And we got Zach, the man, is hanging out with us at home tonight. All right. He's doing Fresh Crack Friday right. with some wild turkey long branch. So good. My favorite. Love it. <laughs> right. Have one for me there, Zach. Zach, I don't have our one on uh, me. Zach Alicia. Close, engineer so. production uh, guy. So, yeah. Uh, we've been missing him, but uh, we'll be we've back been pulling soon. through. We would go through through on the technical side of things, but we'll look forward to having him back here. Yeah, it was good to see him. We did last week. We were out, but we we got together as a group just to kind of talk through some stuff. It was good to see him again. Yep. Yeah. And Shauna, it was good yeah. to see yeah. Shauna too, even yeah. though she was trying to be sleeping. She had a professional picture up. What was it a Zoom meeting? Yeah. She had so. a professional picture up. Meanwhile, we're all you know quarantined and you know not showered and yeah. she's all professional told her, like you, oh no girl you've already <laughs> scared us you could you could take that picture down <laughs> this in the middle of this week she just looked at me and went are you gonna shower ever <laughs> so yeah it's yeah. been been a little lax in that department in the personal hygiene but uh, and i got ugh. i got stories on that but i won't go there i don't want to gross yeah. you all out so what else what are we doing here tonight what's what's our what's our purpose our purpose for being here tonight is Ardbeg 10 year mm -hmm. Scotch whiskey, which uh, you see we've got it in the shoe over here. <laughs> Greg's favorite little uh, yeah, that's right. accent. That's right, the high heel. That's right. So uh, 
Let me, you want me to get to some history and some yeah, information yeah. on that? Should we, if, yeah. All right, well, let's move into it. So Art Bag, it was, uh, the distillery was actually founded in 1815. Wow. Right? And then 1838, Thomas Buchanan bought the distillery from John McDougall, who was the original um, owner, for 12,000 pounds. So, uh, Greg, wow. just so you know, pounds are the money. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> 12,000 pounds of what? 12,000 pounds of what? Um, anyway, and when, when Thomas Buchanan bought it, his uh, John McDougall, the original owner, his brother Alexander continued to manage the distillery. And then when Alexander died in 1853, Ardbeg was taken over by Colin Hay and the McDougal sisters. It sounds like a 50s uh, doo-wop group. Yep, right. um, but the McDougal sisters were Margaret and Flora, and they're believed to be Scotland's first female distillers. Ah. Oh. 1853. So, wow, that, yeah, set in the... Yeah, absolutely, because back then, you know. Yeah. Right. Then moving up to 1887, Ard, Ardbeg records that they're producing 250,000 gallons of whiskey a year, and it makes it the most productive distillery on Islay. And Isla. Isla. Oh, God, I know you gotta that. Get that. Isla. You got it. It's like, it's like calling a gyro a gyro. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, it's like nails on a chalkboard. I apologize, Isla. 1911. Ardbeg trades, trademarks their distinctive A to protect their brand and reputation. So, Greg, I'm going to ask if you want to take that bottle up to the camera. This camera? Um, yeah, the one right there. So everyone can kind of see the distinctive Proper homage a. to the uh, bottle, yes. And show it more there. So you see it like a Celtic? Very, the classic Ardbeg emblem, yes. Which is pretty cool. I like it a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. And it makes sense. 1815 is pretty early um, in the history, right? Cause, but we know that the Isla is one of the first areas that began producing whiskey in Scotland. So it makes sense that, that this one would have been around so long. So. Absolutely. So I'm going to fast forward about 80 years. Production dwindles to almost nothing in 1981, and the distillery closes. Uh, there was a loss of only 18 jobs at the time, but it did have a devastating effect on the local community. And then 1987, Allied Lions acquires the distillery, and two years later, he began distilling again. 1997, Glenn Morangi purchases the distillery, and full-time production begins with the first bottlings comprising of a 17-year-old 1978 vintage and Ardbeg Provence. Provence? Provence, yeah. Provence. I'm so glad you're here because you keep me on my what, toes. What, what is the Provence, though? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I you know, didn't have time to check that. Because that's the south of France, so I wonder what that's about. Some kind of wine finish or something? Maybe. If uh, anyone knows what that is, please let us know and we'll yeah, answer yeah. your question. Yeah. Doug. I, guess I have no clue. <laughs> Me neither. Uh, 1998, Ardbeg is voted the Distillery of the Year, and it's attracting 3,500 um, visitors, and the Ardbeg 1975 brand is launched. Well. So still below what they were producing in 1887, but... Um, pretty great that after just a couple of years of bringing the distillery back that they were able to produce that much whiskey. 2000 Ardbeg Tenure is launched which is what we are going to be drinking tonight and the worldwide I'm sorry in 2000 2000 the Ardbeg Tenure is launched and the worldwide Ardbeg committee is formed to ensure the doors of the distillery never close again. Amen. Right. We need to keep that whiskey flowing. Right? Absolutely. Um, in 2001, Ardbeg Lord of the Isles is launched, which I'm assuming is another br another brand, another type of whiskey. Another, yeah, yeah. And then 2008, Ardbeg Tenure is named World Whiskey of the Year in Jim, Mur Jim Murray's Whiskey Bible. 
2014, the world's first whiskey experiment in space touched down oh. in Kazakhstan. Uh, tw- on September 12, 2014, the answers to the mysteries of maturation in the universe uh, were eminent. Our big supernova 2014 took off. Plus, the world limbered up and partook in the Ardbegian take on the Football World Cup for Ardbeg Day. Oh, okay. Interesting. So they actually took a cask up into space. So So they landed on... That's a pretty... Uranus? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's probably a pretty expensive... (laughs) Then I sent it over to Pakistan. That's probably the most expensive whiskey payload you can get. I bet. Just imagine what that is. So they did, um, on their website, with um, Ardbeg's website, they did do a white paper on that, which I did not dig into, but it kind of summarizes everything that they learned on that space launch. So pretty right. interesting. I want to check that out. See, Get my see hands they, on that paper. Right? Yeah. Right? Online. Ardbeg, Ardbeg uh, website has that. So that's uh, what I have on the history of Ardbeg. A little bit about the product that we're going to sample tonight. Ardbeg 10 year is revered around the world as the peatiest, smokiest, and most complex single malt of them all. Uh, It doesn't flaunt the peat, rather it gives way to the natural sweetness of the malt to produce a whiskey of perfect balance. And it was named the World Whiskey of the Year in 2008, which is what I had mentioned um, during the history. As I'm sure our viewers can see, I'll, we'll get to it, but just sitting there, you can see how light. It is super light. How light a color this has. It's almost if clear. You compare that to my uh, Kilcoman, uh, quite a, another Isla offering. You know, that's it's quite unique in how light it is. Definitely. Yeah, even when Greg was pouring it prior to the show, he was really surprised, and I think you said, whoa. I did. I was You're like, like, wait a minute, it's is probably this the right? I mean, we, we haven't tasted yet, but I just no. have a feeling it's not going to taste like it's that light. I, I, it's probably the, li- the lightest that we've yeah. ever... We had uh, a couple that we did uh, back during Scotch Month, and I think uh, one of those that you brought was pretty light. This the, is cool, like, the, the cool the, Ela yeah. 12 we did, and it was pretty light color, but Man, this, really light. this is even lighter, I would say. It's barely got a tint to it. Yeah, unbelievable. Bless Uh-oh, you. that's not the Rona. Oh, my goodness. It's just me. Okay, sorry, I'm going back. So what do you think, kids? You uh, well, I got, one, I got one thing. If anyone's looking to get this, on the Ardbeg website, they suggest uh, three different local merchants in the Cleveland area. They suggest the Winking Lizard in Rocky River, which we all love the Winking Lizard. There's Giant Eagle on West 117th, been there many, many times, and Zagara's in Cleveland Heights over there on Lee Road. Right. And nice. I was checking it out online, and I saw that it was going anywhere between 50 and about $62. So sometimes online, I know they hike up the price a little bit. Yeah. So if you, you actually go into the stores, you may be able to find it for under that. I think, Doug, you but mentioned about 45 45 to 50 is the suggested point. retail. Yeah. Huh? Um, which, for a really good Isla single wall, that's a pretty good deal. Awesome. And it is a 92% alcohol, 46? 46 ABV, yeah. Yep. 92 proof. Beautiful. All All right, right, did you have anything you wanted to add to the Ardbeg story? No, uh, we'll hit hit up some uh, tasting notes for my favorite uh, distillers app before we get started. All right, go ahead. Can you grab them? Yeah, I'll grab these. Karen. Thank you. I have to tell you, I was reading the tasting notes uh, and the nose prior to us, and I'm a little nervous because Isla's are, it, it's yeah. hard for somebody new to, to whiskeys. Like well, I mean, myself. it's, 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 it's kind of hard. It's the reason to, Sidecar isn't sitting with us. Today. That's right. Oh, God, we should do an Isla every week. Oh, <laughs> shit. No, no, you didn't. <laughs> Oh, he missed right. that. He was busy on, on his phone. Imagine that. So, appearance, light, golden, straw in color, it sure is. Medium to thin legs. Yes. Uh, notes. Peat smoke, 
and bandages right off the pour. Oh, no. Opens up to reveal more peat, more smoke, and more bandages. Menthol and eucalyptus lozenges, lozenges, there we go, and a hint of white grapes with more bold notes of peanuts, brine, glass, grass clippings, clogging a mower after a wet cutting lawn. That's for you, Pat. And uh, <laughs> that have grown a little bit too long. And uh, so a bit of sweet and butter, and I'm going to guess, I'm throwing this in, but uh, some vanilla from the uh, bourbon cask aging. And uh, those are the general notes. Uh, palette uh, still showcases the collision of lightness and smoke that Ardbeg is striving for. Light mouthfeel, delicate on the tongue with powerful flavors. Salt takes the lead ahead of the full force of the smoke which follows in very short order. Salt whipped honey, salt whipped honey. I don't think I've ever had that. Dried mango and papaya, fresh chopped parsley on buttered pasta and a bit of Thai sweet chili. The finish is ushered in by smoke, which takes center stage after the swallow. Lingering notes of salt and vanilla cream. There's my vanilla with persistent smokiness. So, so now it's a, our turn to see uh, if we agree with any of that. You know, the first time I went in and I smelled it, the peat was an after. It was like an after effect. But now that I've been smelling it, the peat becomes more prominent to me. I and, can, I, and I, I get more smell, of that I can, I'm smell. holding the glass not even 12 inches from me. I can smell it. Didn't the whiskey I mean, all that stuff say? that you said. I mean, that's like a five-course meal right there in Italian terms. <laughs> Just wanted to say that. Yeah. We got a lot of talk going on. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's light on the nose for sure. It is, yeah. There's I was expecting whole, it to be a little stronger. There, there's a um, bunch of stuff in there. I'd like to shout out to Donnelly and Williams, uh, Steve Williams, watching down in Houston. My brother Steven Thanks, and Don, guys. John Donnelly. What are you guys drinking? What are you smoking is my question. Swisher Sweets? Killing me. All right, so are we going to go I in get, and taste, or are you um, still... Uh, the nose, I'm getting the... I get the grass, the fresh-cut grass. Yep. I do get some of that. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting some vanilla on the nose. I'm not getting so much of the smoke. It's real light. It's very light uh, on the nose as far as the smoke. I mean, I so, can smell it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it, I don't want to say it's predominant, but, I mean, I can, I can smell the, the scotch. I can smell it. A little, you know, if I go deeper in, I'm getting a little bit of that Band-Aid. You know, that's from the phenols that uh, accompany a lot of these uh, Isla Peat whiskeys. All right, you want to... Let's do it. Give let's, it a shot. Let's give the tasting a I'm shot. going in. I wish we could get a close-up on Karen's face. No. No, you never want that. Wow. I get heavy smoke. I get a lot of flavor, but I get heavy smoke. Heavy smoke on the finish. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I... Yeah, I get peat, but for me, I kind of separate peat from smoke, even though it's mm -hmm. the peat that... If you take a log of wool in, you really... It's like almost smoked meat, right? You get that very almost charcoal smoke flavor, but I don't get this at all. I get some of the peaty uh, phenols and... Get the honey, um, yep. sweet chili. I can almost, if you've ever had that sweet chili cocktail sauce, I, mm -hmm. I can see where they got that comment. AJ, we uh, put Ralph on the couch because <laughs> <laughs> he's not a he's not a Scotch guy, but particularly not an Isla. Yeah. That's your boy beating you up. I um, I'm um, I again I anticipated liking this, but this is to me. Um, this is very enjoyable. This is a just a fantastic Isla expression to me. Very nice. It's on the lighter side of the spectrum. It's um, I don't think it's overpowering in, in terms of the peatiness. And um, I, I, I have a, long, a lingering long aftertaste of, of the peat, the smoke. Yeah. You know, but it's it's actually pleasant. It really is, and that's, it says a lot for me because I'm not big into smoky, peaty scotch. So yeah. I know uh, 
AJ would probably be eating us up right now if he was here. A little bit, a little bit of that tropical fruit they they call mango and papaya. I just get kind of there's definitely some tropical notes in here, and I get the vanilla on the finish. So again, that I'm sure is from the bourbon cask aging. You know, as a as a newbie, sort of compared to mm -hmm. the both of you. It's very hard for me to drink some of these Islas. They're uh, very overpowering well, at times, but I do not get that overpowering peatiness. It's there, and the smoke is definitely on the aftertaste. Yeah, I mean, I'm still uh, really, really long. I'm, I'm not a scotch. I'm learning too. I mean, I I'm not real big into scotch at all. And uh, between Joe and Doug, I've been learning. Well, you're a, you're more a lot, of a, so. yeah. I mean. Like you like the Glen Roths mm -hmm. and the Space Sides. Oh, Patrick! Stuff. Patrick says he's getting a honey peat smoke finish to it. Definitely a smoke yeah. finish. Right. I get the honey. I did definitely get the honey. He's starting get to. The gray, the Patrick's earthiness. starting to embrace the whole tasting. <laughs> you go, thing. Pat. <laughs> right. Yeah, I have to say, the more that I I smell and the more that I taste, mm -hmm. it's. It's wearing on me. I so I have to tell a little better. Pat story because of the... Oh, God, we love these. Particularly with the whiskey we're drinking. He was basically just a beer drinker. Didn't like any kind of spirits whatsoever up until maybe two years ago, if I've got that right. Um, he... We go on these trips, as you know, and whiskey's a big... Scotch, Scotch single malt's a big part of that trip everybody breaking one out every night there's a lot of tradition and he always kind of abstained or he would he would sneak a little taste and go okay i'm done but then he started to embrace it but he only likes these islas he he, he went right to the peatiest you wow. know smokiest whiskeys as the type that he decided that he liked and he's really embraced that and he's been um He's been collecting, and I think he's branched out a little bit as his tastes have gotten more developed with scotch, but but uh, he's still an Isla guy foremost, so, which is interesting for somebody to kind of just come into it and embrace that, which is usually the, the last area that people graduate to. So, nice. so Doug, Very I know nice. on one of your Whiskey Wizards you had talked about the peat, and um, Colin is saying that Isla is supposed to run out of peat by 2021 and distillers are learning to adapt. But will the juice taste different as peat is in short supply? Well, I... <laughs> Ralph's like, please. <laughs> I, I'm going to differ in that I don't think that that is accurate. I know that Campbelltown, which uh, Campbelltown is running a little short on whiskey, um, Isla is still exporting peat to uh, other areas, and, and I think the Isla peat is thought to be the best. Um, it has its unique uh, character, which is a little bit higher in the bromine, which gives it that uh, sea salt uh, character uh, that kind of captures the whole ocean climate and all that. But um, I think I think that. Maybe some more. We can research that again. We did a whole segment on peat, and I think Isla is still has plenty of peat. Um, and uh, the the Scottish climate, such as it is, is still I believe overall in Scotland still making, producing more peat every year than the whiskey industry is consuming. So, um, but we'll revisit that. That's a good question. But I think I think they're doing okay there on Isla. Um, as they're still, I think, a net exporter. So, nice. Very good. I, I, I love how you have all of this history and, and knowledge on, on what's going on. You know, he definitely is the whiskey wizard. <laughs> hat and all, kids, hat and all. Oh, boy, and do we have a treat for you, Connor? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, there's all right. a lot of good conversation going on out there. I'd like to say hey to Jeff Polis, to Cameron. Um, and uh, D uh, Donnelly says that they are drinking Manhattans. Nice. And he says, oh, hell no on the Swisher Sweets. Donnelly is smoking, and I'm going to mess this up, an El Guganese, the wise man. And uh, Steve okay. is smoking the La Traviata. La Traviata. Nice. All right. 
So if it's a wise man cigar, it has no business being in Donnelly's hand. But anyway. Well, maybe it'll wear off. Yeah. <laughs> Get a better chance of my mother crawling out of her urn. I don't know so. if my son Cameron and Warren are watching, but this, again, uh, was a Christmas gift from Warren. It's one of my favorites. So I, I, this is, I've been really enjoying this. And what is Hill, that, Hill, Hill Coleman. Nice. Uh, it's another, I let, uh, as you can see, my, just looking at the color of that, it's, it's got a lot of heat. It's a very full-bodied. I love so much darker yeah. than what we're drinking with the yard thing. Yeah, so it'd be a nice yeah. contrast. Yeah, I want to give a shout out uh, to a gentleman that uh, came and spent his Easter with us. It was a great pleasure. We had a, a really great time, and I uh, just want to give a shout out to Bishop Thomas Owens from Living Waters Ministries. I appreciate you, Rev. Um, we had a great time. Uh, you're a great person, and uh, you definitely brought Easter to the table. And I. I uh, recognize that and uh, I want to say thank you very much for everything that not only that you do for me uh, that you do for other people you have a great following and uh, very well respected person and uh, I love you and I appreciate you uh, giving your day up to, to spend it with our family thank you I really uh, that looked like a very nice uh, Bloody Mary bar that you did we, on Easter we did and, and the Rev we, it, <laughs> aka the Rev we call him um, he, he, he doesn't drink, and uh, but he was even he was impressed. Well, and we kept him entertained, that's for sure. I think it was a little bit of both, to be honest with you. He was keeping us entertained for yeah, quite a while. Yeah, he, he was. Yeah, he had some great right. stories. And just a clarification, AJ is uh, Euclid Andy. It is not AJ, oh, AJ. Right. So, hey, Euclid Andy, Euclid thanks for Andy, joining Andy, what's us. up, dog? AJ Kirk, what's happening? We had a nice time last night. A couple of us got together and just hung out. It was very nice. So Claire is actually Charlie Brown on Claire's email. Okay. And he's saying, can you ask the whiskey wizard who is the whiskey maven and provide some background on him? Oh, he's trying to get all the high-low secrets divulged. <laughs> That's his role. Is this something we need to talk about off, uh, off camera? Of our group of guys that do the outing that we've talked about in the past, um, Anthony... Abraham's is uh, is our whiskey maven, so he's organized the registration. We've been doing this. Uh, this will be the 26th year that we've been doing the single malt whiskey on the trip, and he's tracked every whiskey that we've anybody has brought over the years. We're not allowed to duplicate any anything that we do, and so he kind of organizes that. We have to register, this is what I'd like to bring, and he verifies if we're allowed to, and he gives us permission, and nice. so, yeah. He's, and he's kept nice records of all the stuff that we've had, so. So, yeah, here's, nice. here's, to, the, here's to the Whiskey Maven. All right. Thank you. Salud. So now that we're talking about uh, Whiskey Mavens and Whiskey Wizards, should we? Uh... Let's do it. Check out what the Whiskey Wizard has to share with us. And we'll be right back after a few minutes. All right. Hang tight, guys. Whiskey Wizard! It's the Whiskey Wizard! Ripping fire. So I wanted to do something a little bit different this week by doing something of a product review. Uh, we on the Whiskey Roundtable think that we should check out and discuss any new or interesting whiskey related products that we see. So tonight I'm talking about the Norlin Whiskey Glass. I've seen this product advertised on some sites I frequent and I've been a little bit curious for some time and as it happens I recently received this as a gift. So I guess we should check this out together. Now. Um, comes out with two of these packaged in here and uh, Norlin claims that the glass is inspired by nature, digitally crafted and meticulously refined with master distiller Jim McEwen of Ardnaho and they say that the Norlin whiskey glass has been designed to facilitate and capture a whiskey's complex flavors and aromatics and deliver them to the senses like never before. As you can see, the glass has a unique double-walled design. 
They claim that it offers seamless integration of a scientifically performing inside with an aesthetically beautiful outside for the perfect whiskey drinking experience. Apparently it's won four prestigious design awards. The glass is formed by mouth blowing, Greg and Karen insert joke here, borosilicate glass into two separate molds, one for the inner wall and the other for the outer wall. Okay, so I'm gonna pour a nice dram of something I'm familiar with, and let's just see here. Of course, I did wash these glasses. Perhaps it's the double walled construction, but it uh, does really seem to accentuate the color and does draw the color up along the rim. Kind of a nice effect. So the weight's about 4.4 ounces, which is really quite light, I think. I expected it to be heavier. With the really elegant look of the glass, especially when holding a dram, Intuitively, on some level, I wanted it to feel a bit more weighty in my hands. You know, as if the weightiness and quality are connected. At least it feels that way to me when it comes to fine glassware. So now I think I should nose and taste uh, with this unique glass, and let's see. It works uh, really well, I should think. Um, it does a really good job for the tasting. Is it better than my Glen Cairn glass? I don't know, maybe. But at any rate, I say it's an attractive and unique way to enjoy tasting with your mates. Something not mentioned by Norland, at least that I saw, I would expect the double walled glass to insulate very well keeping your cool dram cooler longer. As I'd expect it to be less likely to be affected by your body heat while it's in your hand. So look, I believe these do function well as a tasting vessel, and one can't deny the attractiveness of Norland's unique design. I, for one, am happy to have these in my collection. So, so for now, this is Douglas Dunbar, the Whiskey Wizard for the Whiskey Roundtable, and now back to the live show. Wow, that is really, really educational for me. To, I've never held a Norland glass before, um, and aside from it being mouth blown. <clears throat> yes, you know that. That's yes. what got my attention. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know whether to wear it or drink Mouth blowing is part of the manufacturing <laughs> technique, and uh, but it is a quite a unique glass. I mean, it's a beautiful thing, and uh, yeah, my only my only criticism was it's a little bit light. You know, um, I wanted almost to like that. a cheapness to it, or what? I mean, because they're they're like almost like forty if bucks. I had, a if pair I of close, if you close your eyes and I gave it to you, you might think it was made of plastic. That's how light mm -hmm. it is. So it, it's you know. It's light. They're about the same weight as my Glen Cairn glass, but you know, obviously, it's a lot bulkier looking. So, uh, but uh, very distinctive, and the whiskey looks beautiful in it. It, it just shimmers, and if so, you know, for tasting, it's really good to get the whole color. Um, and the inside shape is almost like a little bit of a tulip mm -hmm. shape, um, and it seemed to work very well as far as nosing. That whether it's really better than my Glen Cairn. My, like I said, I'm not sure, but but it certainly worked well, and it'd be a great great glass to have in a tasting. So. And what a nice gift! Yeah, yeah, the price is reasonable. I think it was like thirty bucks for two of them. Okay. So not bad. It was very distinctive. So yeah. I see those all the time, you know, for sale because you know if you like bourbon or whatever, they reach out to you and they give you these ads and on social media, and I always see them, and they 
they look amazing. So yeah, yeah. I'm really glad you took the time out to kind of yeah. explain it to us and understand what it like, what it's like, what it feels like in your hand. Because I'm the same way as you. Like I expect a double paint, as I'm going to call it, a double paint glass to be a little yeah. bit more hefty. Right. And yeah. uh, I was surprised with with that, but the fact that it brings out the color and the smell. And the look is probably to me kind of makes up for it because it it almost looks like the whiskey is suspended in yeah. air there inside of yeah. it. Almost looks like there's a force field, like very Star Trek like, and it's just kind of hanging there. So yeah, it's a beautiful glass. Yeah, it yeah. Is. So. It is cool. So I'm it glad to have cool. it. Like I said, in awesome. my collection. So beautiful. I'll probably get a couple more. You know, typically you want to have about four or so for tastings and things. So, so that means I need eight of them. There you go. Yeah, because you know Greg so, doesn't do anything like small. Right. So go big or go home. There we go. Somebody's All right. Do it. All right, kids. So I'm still sipping on this, um, okay. which is surprising. Uh, and I know Doug, you you filled up while we I, went away I to had the to wizard. Get some more. <laughs> yes, I had to get some more. So I really enjoy this. I thought I you were going to put, put that, that in a paper bag and sneak it in. I your think bag you bag. need to have both that, and the, you need to have, um, you know, I would. I would put that right next to my Lafroy ten-year-old, and uh, I think that that's a nice pair to have on your in your whiskey collections. Lafroy, mm -hmm. I can't do. I have tried. And the tried. ten year is really nice. Actually, I, I've only had the ten-year cask. Is that's what I? This had. is you, definitely you, softer. And than that the was Lafroy. really good. Yeah. The ten-year cask was definitely. Really nice. Yeah. Yeah, definitely softer than the Lafroy. Nice. So it might. I I would say this is a good introduction to. To Isla's for somebody. So, awesome. Talking about introduction, that introduction to the whiskey wizard hey. was freaking amazing, man. Where'd you get the cape? Where you been hiding? Hey, well, you know, it's, I, that's my dress. <laughs> Notice I had my dress it's, cape it's and my Superman dress. Superman started off with first. He, then he went yeah. to Superman, gave Doug his. his well, that's old and gear. he knows the dress hat too. The wizard has yeah. his dress hat and his everyday hat. That's so perfect. Awesome. So yeah. yeah. Awesome, that was awesome. great. So uh, thanks, Doug is going to keep that up. He is going to keep up that intro. Thanks to Kayla and Lindsay, my daughters, for helping me with the voice work. Tonight. Nice job, so, kids. Yeah. Nice job. They are very talented ladies. Very talented ladies. Definitely their mother's side. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God for that. All right. Camera? So, maybe not. <laughs> oh, man. Cameron? When's he coming back? I don't know. He's, of course, um, he's with his girlfriend, Lauren, in Tucson, and uh -huh. kind of doing uh, doing his lying low there in Tucson, and, right. which I think it's pretty nice because they get to go out in the op open spaces and enjoy the nice weather and nice. hike and do some of that kind of All stuff. All right, Cameron, if you're watching, we miss you. He is yeah. watching. Right. Yeah. He is watching. He's commenting all over, um, and he asked... How does the taste compare to the Glen Cairn glass? So if you would do a side by side, you know the nose and the taste between a Glen Cairn and a and a Norlin. How would say. you describe? Well, that? I, I I did the, um, you know I used the Glen Rose because uh, I'm pretty familiar with that, and I didn't notice a lot of difference to be honest with you. Um, being able to to uh, Get a deep nose on the whiskey once once you kind of get in a I, I kind of got accustomed like the third time in i think i was um, but i don't know i didn't necessarily uh say I, I didn't do a side by side comparison to really note if if i was catching uh something with one that i wasn't getting on the other but but i uh, i i enjoyed it it worked really well so. awesome Cool. And I have so to say, your daughter is bragging because she's saying it's 75 degrees in Nashville. Oh, yeah. Thanks, uh, Lindsay. You know, we've got like two or three inches of snow on the ground over here, but... Right. I hope you get sunburned. <laughs> Can the Whiskey Wizard offer us his top five single malts? Go. Ah. God. Well, uh, what's your personal? It's Charlie Brown asking. Oh, yeah. Well, I know that the uh, Cool Ela 18 is my favorite. There's, I, I don't know if I can just do it off the top of my head here. The, the Highland Park is, I would, Highland Park 18 is in my top five. Um, 
Um, maybe I'll have to give that some thought. I'll put that in our show notes. Yeah. But um, that's a good question. I, I would have to really give that some thought because there's so many that I really like a lot. Um, almost all the Islas are, are probably up there. And um, like I said, I, I, I'm, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be too surprised if the, the Springbank 18 made it pretty high up on the list. Okay. Um, That's that 18 year old hottie. Mm-hmm. Just, about yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, now, good question. I don't know. I'd have to give that some definite thought. I know what my number one is for sure, and I'm, I'm sure that the Highland Park 18 is in the, in the top five. If yeah, Cameron, not, if not number two, but Cameron says Highland Park 18 is definitely in his top five for sure. Yeah, it, it you know, but the the fun thing is, you know, it's going to take a lot of research to probably get that right. So, and I'm you know I'm up for it. He's so. up for the challenge. <laughs> Whiskey wizard can do it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I'm sure I can sit with Cameron and he'd say, "What about?" And I go, "Oh yeah." Before you know it, I've, I'll probably have ten. Ten in my top five. So. <laughs> there you go. It's hard. Awesome. Sometimes it's hard to narrow down. It, it is, is hard to, to really rank uh, in, in you know what's number two versus number three. Yeah, usually number one is easy one, yeah. to pull in, but then when you have to go below that, it's like ugh. you know. And there's always some emotional component. So you you like a whiskey because of some of the emotional attachment to. To the experience when you first had it, some of those things, which we talked about in one of the episodes, is the whole topic of bias, and uh, and how some of the biases enter in. If you know the cost of the whiskey, or it's one right. you've already, it's it's a it's a distiller that you're already fond of, and all those things have an influence. So, but we I do look forward to us doing as we've we've been talking about our blind taste test episode, which we. we I think once post-pandemic, I think that's one of the things that we want to go out to one of our favorite uh, uh, places to hang and to, uh, record that live episode where we put ourselves, the Whiskey Roundtable cast, into a blind tasting and uh, see how we see how we fare. See how that's going to be so much fun. I I'm know. really, really looking forward to that. Yeah. And, you know, depending on how long this... Uh, goes on and, and what happens in the future, you know, we can always pull that out and just yeah. do it here. And, and we'll have Sidecar run the show. Oh, no shit. If he doesn't son. screw things up. Put our whiskey where our mouth is. That's it. <laughs> Rick, uh, Rich, just, Rich just said hello. Totally yeah, awesome. he did. He hey. said Rick, uh, Rick uh, Presendorfer. He's uh, watching, so I said, hey, Rick, thanks for hanging That's in with us. So what is, what so is Cameron and Lauren drinking right now? Um, let's see. I thought he did mention this earlier. Let's see, Cameron. There's been, there's a lot of comments, you guys. This is great discussion. I love seeing this. Um, this is you know really wonderful that you all are are tuning in. I think we've got a real big audience tonight. So really this this is this, this is fun. This is really fun to kind of watch the comments go back and forth and. Uh, and Everyone uh, kind of talking to each other on the comments and, as well. Uh, I think you so. said Kathy Wolner was was yep. on. Hi, she Kathy. Is. She is. Yes. Thanks for joining us. And um, so you actually bought uh, your first bourbon or Four Roses. Yeah, she no, that's a good, good, good one. Too. Very that's a good, good one. choice. Good word start. For sure. that, I think that was one of the ones we did at the tasting, if I recall. So. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. No. So Kathy, I know you're new, and and I am too to bourbons and whiskeys i think one of the best ones that you can try is long branch by wild turkey that's my personal preference i love and it has wild nothing turkey. to do with that matthew mcconaughey is the spokesperson no, you know it really doesn't because um it's funny that you mentioned that um i won't touch you um but it's really funny that you said that because i was kind of turned off to matthew mcconaughey and then as i got into wild turkey and long branch and i learned more about his involvement and the things that he does he did do a, a movie here in Cleveland a, a year or so, or yeah. maybe even more ago, and and what he brought to the community here was mm-hmm. was amazing, and just an honest, down to earth guy, and um, the whiskey is fine though, Kathy. So I, I'm sorry, yeah. that's where I was going. I can get off track real fast. It's my um, OCD or my ACD or my whatever. 
Long branch. That's, Long branch. That's his, Wild yeah. turkey. It's a good one. That's a good one to try. Yeah. So you had asked what Cameron was drinking. I don't. Uh, scrolling through these, okay. I don't see what he's drinking. Well, I know that if he's if he and Lauren are hanging out, there's definitely going to be some good whiskeys there. So. Uh, AJ wants to know if that's the mic you were talking about last night. Uh, I, Andy, I don't remember what the conversation was, but yeah, that is the new mic for sure. Yes. The Yeti. The Yeti. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Named Yeti. after me. It is. <laughs> Classic, classic podcast, yeah. Mike. So, yeah. but when we go to doing some of those live shows yeah, on we're location, we're going to have to go to our. We'll have to get a separate audio converter and get get a four mic setup going. So, or right. even some of those clip on mics. Uh, yeah, because when you get a lot of background noise, we're going to have to do something different. Though. Right. All right. Well, what are, what are we on to now? News or what's going on? Well, we've uh, we've been on about an hour. You want to go through news, or you want to call it a day? Let's go through some news. Okay, let's do a couple quick news things. Okay. So. You guys gonna tag team on the news? We can. Tonight? You want to go first, Doug? Sure. Kill Coleman. This was uh, the tw this was the 2019 offering. Uh, they've released their 2020 Lock Gorm, and uh, so that's their 2020 edition, with which. Uh, consists of finishing an Oloroso Sherry Butts from 2007, 2008, 2009, and 2011. So, not one butt, but four butts in there. <laughs> I'm sorry, here goes my kindergarten brain again. <laughs> and it's limited to 15,500 bottles. And the single malt bottled, unchill filtered, and uncolored at 46% ABV. And um, it was named Lock... Gorm near the Rockside Farm where the Kilcoman distillery is located. The locks murky and peaty color reflects the dark copper tones of the sherry matured lock gorm release, according to the distillery. Heat smoke and citrus sweetness of the Kilcoman spirit pairs beautifully with the rich influence of these Oloroso sherry casks. So there you go. Mm -hmm. The Kilcoman Lock Gorm 2020 release. So now you got something? I do. All so, right. uh, New Riff. New Riff is introducing, uh, I believe it's going to be in May, uh, introducing two new uh, bottles to their collection. It's uh, called New Riff Backsetter. It's a peated backset Kentucky straight bourbon uh, whiskey. And then they're also doing a uh, peated uh, backset Kentucky straight rye whiskey. So, it's going to be bottled in bond, non chill filtration. Going to be somewhere around forty dollars a bottle. Oh, that's not bad. It's supposed to hit the shelves in uh, in May, so we'll see what happens with that. I don't have any notes or anything on that. Uh, I also want to say, uh, as far as news goes, uh, Ohio liquor is really putting out a lot of great products right now. With everything going on, they're they're really all everybody's getting stuff they haven't been able to get for a long time. And it's much. You mean almost like a free market situation? Yeah. So you know we're getting the Eagle Rares, we're getting the uh, a lot of the Eagle Rares, Blanton. You know uh, the uh, the new uh, and uh, it's been it's been great. So I see a lot of activity from the Cleveland Bourbon Co-op of uh, people shopping places and That's different great. things like that. It's fantastic. Yeah. Buffalo Trace products on the shelf. Oh my gosh, you can never find Buffalo Trace and it's out now, but I think this a lot of this has to do is because the restaurants and the bars are closed. Right. And you have so I was I was at uh, uh, um, uh, wine reserve in uh, Bainbridge and the one in Aurora and they have I they got I think four or six cases of Buffalo Trace came in. Get out. Um, you know, Blanton's and uh, uh, EH Taylors and uh, Eagle Rares and their whole inventory if you guys are ever out this way, stop in. They have a lot of great products. And uh, Chagrin Valley uh, Beverage out there in Bedford. Gotta love those, those guys. Those guys are fantastic. Richmond They're, and Emory Road. Richmond and Emory. Those guys, unbelievable stuff that they, I was there today. Unbelievable stuff that they're getting in over there. So they had Blanton's today, Eagle Rare. <laughs> they didn't get any E.H. Taylor, but they got, a, a you know, a, uh, some of the Four Roses stuff. It was great. Fantastic. What are you laughing at? Cameron. He's like trying to get our attention. He's yelling, Port Charlotte. Port oh, Charlotte. Okay. That's what he's drinking tonight. Okay. So oh, I, I apologize. Wow. Port Charlotte. Okay. And and yeah. me being the newbie, I had no idea. I thought that's where you were. I thought it was a location. So. <laughs> oh, my See, God. I don't know. I don't know. 
I'm learning, that, guys. See, that, that, you know, that's probably up there. That would be on the list. Isn't that a okay. city near Tucson or something? Yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so, I'm going to, hopefully I say this right, RASA, R-A-A-S-A-Y, Rising Cast Program. So, ra right next to the Isle of Skye, just to, basically it would be just to the east of the Isle of east of the Isle of Skye um, is a small island called Rasa. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pronouncing like Isla, see so the A-Y, I'm mm -hmm. assuming is pronounced that way. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Do you want me but, to correct you? Because we know how much fun yeah, I Yeah, yeah, that would be good. So they, this is a new distillery and they, they're launching an exclusive cask membership program, the Rasa Rising. The first 45 casks ever filled at the distillery have been made available as part of the 45 casks offering in a nod to Bonnie Prince Charlie's time hiding out on Rasa following the 1745 Jacob Elk Rising. These historic 45 American oak bur bourbon barrels uh, were used to mature the island's lightly peated inaugural spirit that is now finishing maturation in Bordeaux red wine casks. Whiskey lovers and collectors alike can become part of the 45 and personally fill their own cask on Rasa with their choice of peated or unpeated Rasa spirit while hiding out for a night at the distillery's whiskey hotel. So uh, now if you want one of these casks, you can go there for this whole experience and watch it being filled. And uh, so I think the price uh, of the cask and part, I don't know if it's the whole experience, but uh, it's got just a little bit of a, a, a price tag of 4,000 uh, pounds if you want to get in on a cask. So uh, you can get a cask of that unique Isla Spirit, well it's not Isla, but Rasa uh, Spirit, which again uh, just to the west of the Isle of Skye. And um, with the night there included all the five-star tour, all that type of thing. So I'm not sure the exact date, but, um, and if that's been something that's been changed due to the current situation or not, but um, in any event, so that's, so um, so how many bottles? Like if you, bought, if you went in on a, that cask for 4,000 pounds and bought your own cask, that's about, uh, about uh, 150 to 200, seven, 750 milliliter bottles you oh. would get. It depends on, you know, how long you age um, to, you know, how much Angel's share is lost and all that. But that's roughly about how much you would get. So, and that's, um, I'm guessing about 25, if I do the math, $25 a bottle, something like that. It's not terrible at all for your own, very own, unique, one-of-a-kind barrel of single malt. Yeah, I would say that's not a bad deal, all told. And hey, it's an excuse to go to Scotland and watch your own cask being filled at the distillery and all that would go with that. I'm actually giving that some thought. Maybe the High Low Buddies, we've been looking for a, a cask. So, awesome to be, consider. So, that looks like something that might be worthwhile. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to save that one for next week because there's a lot of good stuff in there. And I, oh, okay. I'm going to, uh, I want to write it all down and okay. do it. So I'm, that, that's a good one for next week. Yeah, nice. absolutely. Yeah, okay. I agree. I, as I was reading it, I was like, nah, I want to get into this. So, yeah. yeah we'll okay, cool. Yeah. Good. Good idea. All right, kids. You got anything else? Uh, no, I mean, I guess we're ready to wrap it up unless there's any comments that we want to. Respond to uh, let or? me check real quick. Let me just check who's out there. Um, Cameron's laughing at me because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't know Port Charlotte was a whiskey. I thought it was a, a place, and I, I apologize for that. Um, Cameron's very happy with the Spring ba Bank 15. Why can't I say Spring Bank? I want to say Spring Break. That's, that's my problem. Well, I mean, that, that, I understand that. <laughs> Uh, Charlie Brown is enjoying a Spring Bank, 15-year-old right now, and so, he's loving the overall experience. Yeah, I get. I think the, the need to. I need to explore those Camel Towns a little bit more. That's kind of on my list of to-dos. So yeah. 
So Cameltown is what a, a, a city in Cameltown is another Scotch whiskey region. Okay. So um, if you remember our map of Scotland, on the west coast you have Skye, and then you have Isla, much smaller, but down here, and then Cameltown is just below that, and it's really not that far from Ireland, which is where you can see how, I, you know, we know the whiskey came to Scotland right. from Ireland, and those those areas, Campbelltown and Isla, started making whiskey first. Um, but I haven't, you know, I'm getting into exploring the Campbelltown, so I'm not as familiar. And well, looking forward to that. So, awesome. yeah, and Chris made it from his car back home. And, oh, right. uh, <laughs> Where did he, he leave his whiskey. car? Where did he, he, he leave his car? Is what I want to know. I'm not even going to ask. <laughs> but he's having a stream whistle pilsner in his Bannerman Brewing Company glass. Nice. Is, right. I'm assuming Pilsner beer. I can speak that language, Chris. Thank you very much. Me too. And my Cleveland yes. Browns. Sorry, Chris. Go Browns. I don't have that much <laughs> beer, but anymore if I do, it's a pill. It's a good uh, German style Pilsner. Awesome. So, um, should I leave us with a parting thought? Yes. I love your parting thoughts. Yes, okay. please do. So we're going to quote the uh, famous nighttime host Johnny Carson on this one. Johnny said, happiness is having a rare steak, a bottle of whiskey, and a dog to eat the rare steak. <laughs> <laughs> so long, everybody. All right. Great. Everyone have a great weekend. Be safe, please. We are your hosts, Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. See you next week, kids. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Whiskey stopped working, every bar in town would be closing their doors, shutting down. Everybody would be trapped with their thoughts, cause nothing else would pay like bourbon or scotch. Oh no, oh no, no. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working, where the hell would I be? Probably wasting lots of money trying therapy. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working, what the hell would I do? Honestly, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't be over you. Tennessee